gentlemen, we are going to be taking a look at the DaVinci Resolve 19.1 Fairlight Office. So let's get into it. That's right, guys. A little bit of fun with the intro there, but we're going to be talking about the DaVinci Resolve 19.1 audio updates. They cover things in the Fairlight page as well as some really cool improvements here in the edit page. But let's get started in Fairlight. Then we'll jump over to the edit page. I'll show you the cool stuff that they've got over there for us now. So when it comes to our audio, we are in Fairlight and in no particular order, I'm going to run through some of these cool new updates here. The first one is being able to easily duplicate tracks. All you got to do is come to any one of your tracks here in Fairlight, right click, and we've got duplicate track right here. You click on that. Boom. Now we have an instant copy of our track. It's going to have all of your effects and all of your settings on the duplicated track. Something that I've wanted to do for a long time, because even if you don't need all of the same audio, maybe you want the exact same settings for your EQ, your dynamics and your effects on the track. You can just duplicate the track right now. So really, really like that new feature here for Fairlight. Now, you also have the ability to disable an entire track, right? Now, yeah, you could used to be able to come and click on a clip and hit the D key to disable the clip. But if we wanted to disable the entire track, we can right click, come on down to disable track. It's going to gray it out for us. And now we can just kind of have it on the side, right? You, I mean, you could have always muted it, but sometimes it's nice to just disable it so you don't have to worry about it. If you want to re-enable the track, just right click and come on down to the disable track here and uncheck that. And now our track is back active. Another great one that I like here is the ability to delete multiple tracks at once from the edit index. Now you can do this also in the edit page, but if I come to my edit index, I open that up. I'm looking at my tracks right here. I can select as many tracks as I want. Let's say all of my effects tracks. I can right click and say delete tracks. Boom, they're all gone really quick and easy. If you've got a bunch of extra scratch tracks in there that have things on them that you don't need anymore, you can just quickly delete them all right here from the edit index. And this also does work in the edit page. I'm just going to hit command or control Z to undo that because I don't actually want to delete them yet. This next one I really like a lot and it has to do with organizing our tracks. Sometimes I want to move tracks around and yes, we could always open the index and move tracks around that way. But now I could just come right into my mixer here. I can extend out my tracks and let's say I want to move SFX sound effects eight here. I want to move it over with the rest of them. I can just click, hold and drag. Boom. It's going to move it over for me, moves it in my timeline, moves it in my mixer, and I could just organize files however I want. So if I want to move my leaves file over, we can move that over and it's going to put it wherever I want it to be. Really like that. It just speeds up the workflow. And when you're trying to shift things around and move things around, you don't have to open up the index. You can just do it right here in the mixer. Really like that feature. Now we do have one here, an update called support for trimming from unity in the mixer. Now I'm not exactly sure. I think this is what it means here. So if I came to a particular track, uh, let's just go with my music track right here. And I came up to no input. We have our path settings here and here's our trim and it's set at unity, which is zero. But if we were to reduce this or boost this, that would change the trim for the track itself before you ever even touch the mixer or anything. Now, most of the time I find that I've used this when it comes to recording into DaVinci Resolve. So my microphone, for example, might be not loud enough, too loud, and you can adjust your trim here to adjust that signal coming in and being recorded into Resolve. But now it looks like you can use it on any track that you want uh, with whatever audio you've already got in the track, not necessarily when you're just recording into DaVinci Resolve. So I think that's what that means. Um, I tried to look it up, but I didn't really find anywhere to look it up. Um, I didn't see like a 19.1, you know, uh, uh, manual where they list out some of the new stuff. So I got to take a look for that. It's got to be one somewhere, right? Um, so I think that's what that means for that, that you can adjust the trim here and it's just going to reduce or boost the, uh, the audio coming through. So it, for example, if I leave this at zero, let me just play through my music track here. When I bring it down you can trim or you can boost it up. So I think that's what they're talking about when they say you can trim from Unity right in the mixer. Another new one that I don't really work with too much here is support for new Stereo Direct 7.1.2 and 9.1.4 Dolby audio formats. So I don't do too much with Dolby, so I don't really know much about it. But if you use those, you're going to know what that is. And uh, maybe it's something that's going to be beneficial for you in your workflow. Another update here that they have is finer adjustments on different virtual sliders, which I'm not exactly sure where that falls. Um, but what I think it means is that 
for example, on your audio clips, if I just zoom in in my timeline here, uh, we would be able to make fine tune adjustments if we held our shift key while we grabbed, for example, the gain line here, right? It's going to allow us to be a lot more precise with our editing. So I don't know which sliders they're talking about because it doesn't really say in the document here, but I'm going to look into that, try and get that figured out. Uh, but it just seems like you're going to have a little bit more fine tune adjustments if you use your alt option or shift um, keys while you're adjusting different things here for your audio. So finer tune adjustments is something that's always welcome. Uh, so that way when you grab, you know, a slider, for example, you don't boost it way up or drop it way down when you only need to move it just a little bit. Now, when it comes to the visual look of our audio tracks here in Fairlight, uh, as well as in the edit tab here, everything was made just a little bit clearer. So, I mean, you can zoom in and I mean, everything looks pretty sharp here. You can adjust your different looks here if you want to show full waveforms, show the borders, show the gain line. Uh, but everything just looks a little bit crisper here on the titles for any one of our audio clips. We now have a little background behind it just to make it stand out and be a little bit clearer. Uh, we should be able to see a little bit better, you know, our interactions between clips and where clips meet. And as we zoom in and out on the timeline here, we should just be able to see everything a little bit crisper and a little bit clearer when it comes to our audio and our waveforms. Another thing that's added there just to help with some clarity is this little marker down here, which tells us where on the timeline our playhead is. Maybe you're way down here doing some edits. You're like, where's my playhead at? You can see that little red tick mark there you know your playhead is all the way back over here. So just a little something that's gonna help you navigate around your project a little bit easier. If you like to use groups in your projects, for example, if I open my mixer here and let's just say I throw my dialogues into a group, I could say create a group, I put my di two dialogue tracks in there. You can name it whatever you want. Let's just call this speak. So now I've got a speak group right here. And if I wanted to see that group, I can just come up to my groups icon right up here and now we can see what is in our groups and and work with our groups if we need to click on the settings here make changes we can you know adjust things however we need to so this little button up here is what has been added it's just an easier way to access your groups if you're trying to group together different types of audio channels or different uh ways that you might want to work with your audio tracks you create the groups now it's just easier to access it Another update here in Fairlight is if you work with linked audio tracks, you can now apply effects or track level effects to those linked tracks. So just to show you what that means, for example, if I have a keys left and right channel here because I have two signals coming from my keyboards, this could be not only music, but it could work for anything. And then I came to the Fairlight menu and I went to link group. And because they're two mono tracks, I can select the two of them and I can say link. So now we see those two tracks are linked together. And down in my timeline here, we can see we've got a little white bar in between the two tracks. So what I could do now is come to my mixer and they both appear as one linked track right here. I can go ahead and apply any effects or track level effects that I want to onto my track here. For example, I just picked this one right here, the, the CLA Echo Sphere, and it's gonna get applied to both tracks there. So uh, I guess you couldn't do that before. I don't work with the link tracks too often, but um, now you can apply an effect onto those link tracks if that's something that you need to do. So those are the big updates in Fairlight, but wait, there's more. That's right, they added some functionality for audio in the edit page that I'm real excited about. Let me show you what those updates are. And I just hit my desk with my knee, so. <laughs> Okay, let's get to the edit page. In the edit page here, first thing we want to talk about is the audio ducker, right? We've always had this since uh, version 19. If I were to click on my music track, where's music? Here we go. Select my music track and then open my inspector. We have our auto ducker right here. I'm going to go ahead and turn that on. Now, my biggest complaint with the auto ducker is that you could only have one audio source, right? So I want the music to duck down anytime I've got somebody speaking. And if I have multiple tracks of people speaking, I need multiple tracks to be the source for that ducking to respond to. Well, Blackmagic went ahead and they added that in there for us. So we can see we have source one right here say I'm going to say dialogue and let's say I have two dialogue tracks. Well, now we've got this plus and minus here. I can click on the plus, select another source, dialogue copy. And now my music track will respond or automatically duck to both of those source tracks. And I can select as many tracks as I want. Can add in a bunch here. I don't know if there's a limit. Looks like maybe there's not because I just added 25 and uh, that seemed to be no problem. So really big deal there that we can now use multiple tracks as a source for our ducking to take place. 
Super important when it comes to having your dialogue in multiple tracks and you want your music to duck under it. Really important. So that's a huge win for everybody, really, because this is such an easy way to do it. You don't have to get into the side chain and all that. You've got the ducker right here. Super easy. As far as the advanced settings, all that stays the same. So now you should be off and running and being able to duck whatever you need to duck under however many source channels you need to duck it. You know what I'm saying? This next one's a game changer, and I'm really looking forward to using this. So you don't even have to jump into Fairlight anymore to use your EQ, your track level EQ, dynamics, and your plugins. Because if we look in the mixer here in the edit page, right, got your mixer open, we can now just click on any one of these icons here and open up all of our items here. For example, my dialogue track, I need the EQ. I need to make a change. Do I have to jump into Fairlight? Not anymore. Double click the EQ. It's going to open it up right here. I can make changes if I need to. Close it down. I can do it for any track that I need. Double click the EQ, no problem. Now let's say maybe I would need to adjust some dynamics. I want to adjust my compressor a little on my sound effects too. Just double click on the dynamics. It's going to open it up for me. We can turn it on, turn on our compressor, do whatever we need to do. And we don't have to jump over into Fairlight. So your basic tools of dynamics, EQ and plugins, you're going to be able to access from the edit page, which is huge because the majority of the time, those are the things that you're going to be using, right? For your audio work, you're going to be using the EQ, the dynamics, your, your compressor. Uh, yes, you might use some plugins if you have a need for them. But for the majority of, of you folks out there, you're probably just mainly using EQ and dynamics, right? Maybe a little multi-band compressor on there. But now you've got so many tools right here in the edit page for your audio between the voice isolation, the other track level effects that they added, the dialogue leveler, all that good stuff. And then now you can access your EQ, your dynamics, and your uh, effects right here in the edit page. Huge game changer. Really love that. I mean, it just makes your workflow easier, right? Now, I'm still going to recommend you jump into Fairlight because I'm a Fairlight guy. Fairlight's awesome. But the fact that now we can do it in both spots and just kind of work a little bit uh, more se seamlessly, if you will, in the edit page, which is where I do all my work anyway, works out you know, really good to be able to access these things there. So nice job, Blackmagic. Well done. Well done. Another big update is if you use nested timelines and you did your audio editing in an original timeline, then you bring that timeline into another project. Now Resolve is going to do a much better job of retaining those audio changes you made in the original timeline and carrying that over into the new timeline where you've inserted your other timeline. I hope that makes sense there. So basically your audio changes will carry through a lot easier. I know in the past there were some issues with that not working out as good as it should uh, or audio changes not carrying through if you were using, you know, a timeline in another timeline. So it's good that they improve that and that's going to take away some headaches for you if you're working with timelines inside of other timelines. Another update here is if we select any clip and then we open up our inspector and then we come to the file section, we can come down and we've had the audio configuration in here where we can see uh, what's going on with the audio. But now you got the ability to click on one of your audio sources and change the level of the source before it even gets in your timeline there, or well, in this case, it's in the timeline, but you can adjust the source of the audio right here for, you know, the file itself. So if you want to adjust the level there, you can drag it down, bring it up, do whatever you need to do. And the last one here that may come in handy, it may not, I don't know, it depends on how you work with your audio. But if I were to come to any clip, right click, open up my clip attributes, come to the audio section, right here we've got our source channel. And a lot of times if you're syncing up your audio and you click on this drop down, you're gonna have link channel one, link channel two, as well as the embedded audio channels one and two. Well now, if you don't wanna use either one of them for whatever reason, you can select none. Now, this might be because you have, uh, you know, a stereo channel, you recorded a lav mic from one person, a lav mic from another person, you're on the right and left channels, you want one of those source inputs to be none, you could do that and then drop it in a mono track, you'll be good to go. So that's where I might see that you might want to use this uh, none option, but it's there in case you want to use it. So that is your major DaVinci Resolve 19.1 audio updates here. Which one's your favorite? What do you guys like the best out of all these new audio updates? I'm going to have to go with, I think, the Ducker. That's probably the one that is going to be most useful to most of you guys out there uh, because it just makes auto ducking super easy and gives you the flexibility that you need to be able to use multiple source tracks, multiple people speaking and dialogue and stuff to uh, duck your music under. So I think that's uh, probably one of my favorites here. 
And I think that's gonna be most helpful for you guys. So if you have questions on all these new audio features, on any of them, or even any old audio features, drop me a comment down below. You wanna know what other things are new in DaVinci Resolve 19.1? I got a whole video on pretty much everything, or at least I try to cram everything in there as far as all the updates. And my other creative friends, we've got uh, all kinds of updates from you know all our other friends out there on YouTube here in the DaVinci Resolve space. So with that said, I'm getting back to making some more videos for you guys, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Peace.